Hello and welcome to another NGen Math 6 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler and today we're going to be doing Unit 7 Lesson 4, Investigating Ratios Using Tape Diagrams. So man, have we been working with ratios a lot, right? This is our fourth consecutive lesson on ratios. And today we're going to use tape diagrams to help us really solve a lot of ratio problems, including some that can be quite, quite tricky. So let's get into how that works right away in the first problem. All right, here we go. Now we're gonna start by using a tool that we used in the last lesson, which is a double number line. And then we're gonna move to a tape diagram to see how the two approaches sort of mirror each other. Then we'll move only to tape diagrams. So let's do it. Exercise number one. A bag contains red and white colored pieces of candy. The ratio of the number of red pieces to the number of white pieces is three to two. There are 18 pieces of red candy. Letter A, use the double number line below, determine the number of white pieces of candy. All right, well, since we've already done this before, what I'd like you to do is fill in this double number line. All right, we know that there's 18 pieces of red candy and we know the ratio of red to white candy pieces is three to two. So you go ahead, fill out that double number line and figure out how many white candies we have. All right, well, here we go. Let's do a little number line work, right? We know for every three red pieces, we're going to have two white pieces. So that means the red candy line is gonna go by threes. So three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27. And the whites are gonna go by twos, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. So what do we know? 18 pieces of red candy. That means there must be 12 pieces of white candy. All right, pretty simple. And a great use sort of a double number line to figure that out. Now let's take a look at letter B. What factor, parentheses number, is the three to two ratio scaled by to get the actual number of pieces of candy? Show the multiplication sentences. All right, so let, let, let's talk about this, right? We know, kind of going back to the number line, right? We know that for every three pieces of red, right, that we've got two pieces of white. Now, we're scaling this ratio, as we do a lot of times, and we know that we're going over to 18 red. So we have multiplied by three in both cases. Right, wait, no, sorry, not by three. We've multiplied by the number six in both cases, right? So our scaling factor is six. Okay, so now let's see all how all of this connects into tape diagrams. Letter C. Below is a tape diagram representing the three to two ratio. Fill in the missing blank and then show how many of each type of piece would fit into each rectangle of the diagram. All right, so let's talk about tape diagrams in general. When I've got a tape diagram that kind of looks like this, the idea is that all of these rectangles, all five of them in fact, have the same number of things inside of them because they're the same size. So we know, right, that we have 12 white pieces of candy, right? We know that, we figured it out in letter A, okay? There are three boxes or three rectangles that hold the 18 pieces of red candy, meaning that there are 18 divided by three or six in each. Likewise, the white pieces of candy, there are two boxes for those and it holds 12 pieces of candy each, meaning of course, that there are six in each of them. Notice each rectangle containing the same number. Not only containing the same number, right, but in fact, the number that's in there is what we scaled the ratio by, right? And that kind of makes sense because if there were one piece of candy in each rectangle, then there'd literally be three pieces in the red and there'd be two pieces in the white, giving us that three to two ratio. Whereas if there were two pieces in each rectangle, right? Then we'd have six total pieces of red and four pieces of white candy, right? It would be that next scaled ratio up. 
but this is how we can easily, easily use tape diagrams to answer ratio problems. So let's actually kind of do one of those in letter D. A larger bag of candy has the same 3 to 2 ratio of red to white pieces. This bag has 42 pieces of white candy. White candy. Fill in the tape diagram below to find the number of red pieces. All right, so this is really cool. Look at how easy this is going to be, right? As long as, right, I take my 3 to 2 and I've got three rectangles here and two rectangles there all holding the same amount of candy, right? Then I can do the following. I can say, all right, well, I know that uh, we have 42 pieces of white candy, right? That's a beautiful number 42 sitting right there. And those 42 pieces have to fit in these two boxes. So, of course, I can just do 42 divided by 2 and I get 21. So there's got to be 21 pieces in each one of those two boxes. But the idea of a tape diagram is that every one of the rectangles is going to have the same number in them. So, in fact, the number of red pieces is going to be 21 times 3, or 63 red pieces. What tape diagrams do beautifully is they allow us to see the scaling factor, right? That's really what the number inside of the rectangles are, is they're that scaling factor. They're what we're multiplying the ratio by in order to get the actual numbers that we have. Now letter E to finish off the problem is very easy. It just asks us, what's the total number of pieces of candy in this bag? Well, I've got 63 red pieces, I've got 42 white pieces, so simple enough. 63 plus 42 is going to give me 105. All right. Sometimes that's the entire problem. They give you all this information and then ask you this question. All right. Let's use tape diagrams to solve a bunch of other problems in this particular lesson. Here we go. Tape diagrams allow us to visualize the division and multiplication that are involved in every ratio problem. Exercise number two. Aiden does a survey of kids in his 6th grade class and finds that the ratio of those who have pets to those who don't is 7 to 4. There are 20 students without pets. Determine the total number of students in the survey using the tape diagram below. Label it. All right, so let's work through this together. Now, first off, right, I've kind of given you the preliminary tape diagram. So that's like one step you don't have to do. But keep in mind, the reason that the tape diagram is set out this way is that we've got this 7 to 4 ratio, right? The ratio of kids who have pets is the 7 to the ones that don't have pets is the 4. And therefore, I have 7 equal-sized rectangles here and 4 equal-sized rectangles here. And again, these are with pets. And these are without pets. Now, what do we know? We know that there are 20 students without pets, right? We know that. And those 20 have to fit into these four boxes, which of course means that if I do 20 divided by 4, there have to be 5 in each one of those boxes. All right. But if there are five in each one of these boxes, there also have to be five in each one of these. Which means the students with pets must be seven times five, or 35. Now, maybe that's my final answer, except it's not. The question asked me to determine the total number of students in the survey. That would be the kids that have pets plus the kids without the pets. And so the final answer here is 55 students, right? Simple enough. And again, what an easy way of, of sort of visualizing what's going on. We did this. We've done this already. We've done it with double number lines and we've done it with tables, right? But here, we can really visualize that 7 to 4 ratio using those tape diagrams. And then it's very easy, once that we know that's 20, we know we've got to do 20 divided by 4, giving me 5. And then that 5 really is the scaling factor, because then we take the 7, multiply it by 5, and now we can find the number of students 
with pets. All right, let's keep working on these. Let's take a look at one where you have to do the diagram yourself. Exercise number three. A lemonade recipe calls for a water to lemon juice ratio of three cups to one cup. Michaela is making a large batch where she uses a total of 24 cups. Create a tape diagram to figure out how many cups of water and how many cups of lemon juice Michaela uses. All right, well, here's the thing. If we've got a ratio of three to one, right, then the way I wanna do my tape diagram is I wanna have one of those things have three rectangles, and then I want one of them to only have one rectangle. Now, we wanna make sure that we're very comfortable with which is which, right? It says water to lemon juice, three to one. So in other words, three cups of water to one cup of lemon juice. And thank goodness that's the ratio, because if it was the other way around, it'd be very, very, very tart. All right, so this is my water, and this is my lemon juice. Now, what do we know? We know that there's a total of 24 cups, a total of 24, meaning that when I add these two together, right, there must be 24 cups. Well, remember, the same number has to go into all four of those boxes. So what number should it be? Well, it should be 24 divided by four, and that means there should be a six, right? There should be six cups in each one of those boxes, and now we have it, right? How many cups of water? How many cups of lemon juice? Well, it looks like we're gonna have three times six, or 18 cups water, and not that we really need to do this, but one times six, six cups lemon juice. That easy, right? It's amazing what these tape diagrams can do in terms of making the division and the multiplication more obvious, even in situations that are quite, quite tricky. So let's look at one in the next problem that would have been actually fairly difficult to solve without using a tape diagram. Here we go. Exercise number four. Maria and Victor each play a video game. The ratio of the number of points Maria scores to the number of points Victor scores is five to three. Maria scores 424 more points than Victor scores. How many points did Maria score? Construct a tape diagram to answer the problem. Now, don't get me wrong, this problem could certainly be done with a double number line. It could also certainly be done with a table, and eventually it could be done using algebra, which we'll see at some point in this unit. But watch what we can do with a tape diagram. Remember, the ratio of Maria's points to Victor's points is five to three. So let's draw out one tape diagram that has five boxes, one, two, three, four, five. And now let's draw out one that's got three boxes. Now the first one are Maria's points. And the second one, actually I'm gonna put it way out here, are Victor's points. All right, so that, that helps us visualize that five to three ratio. So what's the other information they told me? Well, they say that Maria scores 424 more points than Victor's. All right, so how can I use this tape diagram now to figure out how many points Maria scores? Pause the video now and see if you can figure this out. All right, well, look at it this way, okay? I'm gonna just real quickly change my color to green. If I kind of circle these squares, those squares should have the same number of points in them, right? Because, you know, each one of these boxes is gonna contain the same number in them, so three of these and three of these will be the same. But remember, Maria scores 424 points more than Victor. 
So all of those should be in those two boxes, right? Those are the points more that, Vic, that Maria scored than Victor. So how many should go in each one of these two boxes? Well, for that, I'm gonna do 424 divided by two because they go all in two boxes. That's gonna be two, four, zero, two, one, two, zero, four, two, four, zero. So that means that there are 212 in each one of those boxes. But the beautiful thing about tape diagrams is that every rectangle contains the same amount. Otherwise, honestly, they'd be useless. So that means there's 212 here, 212 here, 212 here, 212 here, 212 here, and 212 here. And this allows us to figure out the answer to a lot of different things, but of course, the only thing we're really concerned with is how many points did Maria score? Well, Maria scored 212 times five, right? So I can just kind of do that over here, 212 times five, 10 carry the one, six, 10, and it looks like Maria scored 1,060 points. All right, and that's it. But again, this would have been actually quite difficult with either a table or with a double number line, because I mean, the ratio, five to three, then it would be 10 to six, 15 to nine, 20 to 12, I mean, it would have taken forever to figure out where we were at in order to get 424 more points for Maria than Victor. On the other hand, kind of laying it out here makes you realize, well, if these three are the same, then those 424 extra points have to be included in these two boxes, making each of them 212, but then since each one of the rectangles has to have the same amount in them, it makes it very easy to figure out Maria's points. We could also figure out Victor's points quite easily by taking the 212 and multiplying by three. All right, let's wrap this thing up. So today we saw really one of our final tools that we'll use, and we're gonna see one more, but one of our final tools that we can use in order to help us solve um, ratio problems, and those are tape diagrams. And tape diagrams are great because they very easily help us think about what that scaling factor is. You know, what we have to multiply the simplest ratio by in order to solve whatever problem we're working with, all right? So, get some practice on tape diagrams in tonight's homework because they will be extremely useful as we move forward. For now, I just wanna thank you for joining me for another NGen Math 6 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler, and until next time, keep thinking and keep solving problems.